Isn't that a beautiful sound? With the majority of the world's population currently residing in urban environments, this is a sound often drowned out by construction, crowds and traffic. But what if I was to say to you that this is the sound of a forgotten friend, reminding us of their presence, their perseverance and their loyalty. You see, nature is on our side. Specifically biodiversity, and the ecosystem services it underpins. And this is the story about how I came to this realization and in light of the recent United Nations Agreement in Paris, how nature is helping us to succeed in anticipating, mitigating and adapting to climate change. My brother and I were scouring the edge of a coppice willow plantation. Um, willow is, coppice willow is a crop grown for renewable energy purposes, um, producing biomass. It was a chilly, wet, windy week in February, and we were there for one purpose, to find these little guys, willow beetle, identified economically as the most damaging insect pest in coppice willow. <coughs> now, we needed to find these beetles because they were part of my experimental phase of my PhD. The overall aim of the project was to develop a computer-based model describing the life, uh, the life history or the life cycle of the insect. And this model was then going to be used to simulate the annual occurrence and the number of generations these insects would have as we enter and continue through a warmer century. The only problem was that unlike the previous summer when they were lounging around in the trees and feeding on the leaves and just generally up to no good, they were now nowhere to be found. We scoured the uh, the hedgerows and the uh, weathered fence posts, and we just couldn't find them anywhere. They were nowhere to be found. And this is disappointing news for someone like myself who likes to spend quality time with insects. <laughs> um, my, I, I just, we just couldn't find them anywhere. And then we found the remnants of a previous population. They were empty, hollowed out casings, but nothing was crawling around, nothing we could capture. So disappointed, we packed up our stuff, and myself and my brother, we were headed home. Justifiably displeased, he kicked a log on the ground. It cracked open, and a fountain of beetles burst into the air. We'd hit the beetle jackpot. <laughs> we uh, collected our winnings on our hands and our knees, and we hurried straight back to the lab, excited. We were setting up the experiment. Everything was going well, except it wasn't, because the beetles weren't surviving long enough. They were dying. As the days passed, more and more beetle deaths were recorded, and this just wasn't making any sense. But then I noticed something, I noticed something different. It was another dead beetle, but this time, there was something protruding from its abdomen. It was a tiny iron-shaped, iron-colored capsule, like that, like this. I was astonished at the size of it. It was like the gory scene from Alien, where the creature bursts out of your man's chest, you know. <laughs> I won't waste it. Mmm, that's lovely. <laughs> um, so I scanned back through the containers and sure enough, a pattern began to emerge. Wherever there was a dead insect, there was this capsule left behind. And there was a link occurring here. Wherever um, the, whoever was doing this, they were kind of like acting like a criminal. They were leaving a calling card at the scene of the crime. As the days passed, they uh, passed away and uh, the experiments uh, were in complete ruin, so they were abandoned. But undeterred, I decided that I was going to collect these capsules and monitor them and see what happened. And sure enough, uh, in the days that followed, the containers with the little capsules inside them, they cracked open, the little capsules cracked open and an abundance of flies appeared. Parasitic, fly, parasitic flies, to be exact. This little creature here, Medina luctosa, uh, has been identified as a species that needs to invade beetle carcasses, or live beetles, in fact, in order to complete its own life cycle. 
And it wasn't just the only fly we discovered, we discovered a load of different flies and some of them had never even been registered before and hence were new species. And then I remember back to that chilly, wet, windy week in February in the forest and the disarticulated beetle fragments we'd found on the forest floor. This fly, this fly right here was almost certainly responsible. The project was eventually completed and um, the findings suggested that by the end of a warmer century, the willow crop would produce leaves quicker, the, would produce them earlier, the beetles would come out and would feed on these earlier, they would develop quicker and they would hang around for longer causing more damage. And they wouldn't have uh, just one generation as they currently do so, they would have three. Bad news for willow growers. But it was the experience with the parasitic flies that really resonated with me. It opened my eyes to the brilliant but brutal world of biocontrols, naturally occurring biocontrols, as opposed to unnatural pesticides. But it opened my mind to the realisation that we have many, many allies against climate change that exist in the surrounding environments around us. And the positive work that they do often goes unnoticed. It's undervalued and understated, and due to a lack of understanding. To give you an idea of some other of these creatures, these tiny nematode worms, these invade other major insect forest pests and control for them, and larger fruit and nut feeding animals that scatter seeds, replenish our world's woodlands with new trees, keep the cycle going. These lock in billions of tons of carbon dioxide into our forests every year. It's not just happening in the forest, it's happening in the seabeds as well. These little hidden heroes here, moss-feeding bryozoans, currently thriving in the polar extremes due to a reduced sea ice cover and due to now an abundance of carbon-rich phytoplankton. And then the deep-sea predatory fish that swim up from the depths up to the shallow fish, feed on them, and then these shallow fish, which in turn feed on the carbon-rich phytoplankton. These species lock in billions of tons into our ocean's depths also. Not only are these species and more on our side but against climate change, but much evidence now suggests that if we are to counteract climate change, not only must we harness the classical elements of the sunlight, the winds and the waters. We need to harness the power of biodiversity itself. And this is a real tragedy right now because the Earth's biota has entered the sixth mass extinction with species currently disappearing up to 100 times faster than normally seen during previous cataclysmic events. Worse still, and worrying still, is the fact that these species are responsible for many of the essential ecosystem services that we are reliant on. Ecosystem services like atmosphere filtration, water purification and crop pollination. We are slowly beginning to reacquaint ourselves with our, these wonderful creatures and the ecosystem services they provide. These ecosystem services valued at over 100 trillion euro a year. But like any good relationship rebuilding exercise, there are many steps involved in this. Things like uh, observing and listening to their needs, uh, resolving any underlying trust issues that might exist between us and them, and committing to change ourselves. Recent environmental success stories lead me to believe anyway that we are headed in the right direction. Um, success stories such as the Keystone XL pipeline project in North America and the dismissal of it, <coughs> the continued support for the EU bird and habitat directives and the expansion of marine conservation zones worldwide. We must heed the words of previous TEDx, uh, TED speaker and modern day Darwinian E.O. Wilson and preserve every speck of biodiversity as we learn how to use it and understand, come to understand what it means to humanity. Otherwise, a more hostile world may be the one without the wild beasts to share it with. Thank you.